perfect. Oh, yo, hi. Okay, I'm going to put this back in my pocket and I'm going to get myself situated. My, um, my mug says, woke up sexy as hell again. And that's my own little motivation here. Y'all, thank y'all for having me. Um, I'm Sonia Fernandez LeBlanc. Um, I'm old school. I'm, I'm, I'm an elder with my glasses and my speech. And I'm going to do this thing where when I get to the end of the page, I'm just going to throw it. Wow. So I feel really good about that. So um, I'm excited to be here. Happy eighth birthday. I'm really into tarot. So this is a strength year. Wait, can y'all hear me? Did it go off? Is it good? Okay. Um, this, this is a strength year for, um, if you follow the tarot, which is a big deal. It's good. It's the lady and the lion and like, it's good. It's a powerful year for y'all. You're it's going to, we're going to come in to a whole new sense of power with Creative Mornings Nashville, as well as the global network. Things are changing y'all. And I thank y'all for being here. Um, and getting up and out, because I think that's relatively new for a lot of us. We haven't done that in a couple of years. So thank you for like hauling your butt out of bed and coming and being here. And for those of you who are on Zoom, I feel like I have a lot of friends on Zoom. Thank y'all for not hauling <laughs> yourself out of bed, just maybe like actually still being in bed and watching and drinking coffee. So um, y'all... <laughs> This is my favorite form of creative expression, this folklore thing. So I'm so excited to be here. I'm a storyteller. I write stories about my personal journey and I weave old stories with the modern contemplations of our time through the lens of mythic imagination. Doesn't that sound amazing? If I do say so myself, I mean, it sounds so much better than what it really is that I do. When I, but when I'm invited, so that's what I do, right, I, 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 as a writer. But when I'm invited to speak those stories aloud into spaces and communities like Creative Mornings, that is when they alchemize into some profound magic, which we are going to make together today. Y'all already started it with your, with some of y'all coming forward with your tradition. I just want to warn you all that everybody's going to be telling a story today. Take a deep breath, take a deep breath. All right, I guide others who feel called to connect with me to do the same with their personal stories through my business, Revolutions Imaginarium, where I create community around medicinal storytelling, collective elderhood, embodied divinity, and contemplative futuring. This contemplative futuring is a concept I coined where we contemplate the secular as sacred and create practices around unraveling ourselves, our communities and society from the conditioning and programming of a fear and scarcity mindset back to a balance of instinctual knowing, intuitive wisdom and mindfulness, which is requisite elder work y'all, right? We, we are, and I'm going to talk more about being an elder because I'm an elder because I have gray hair and I have these glasses and my godson, he, he's having a baby and I had to go to the shower for it. And I was like, oh, this is like, just call me Doña Sonia. But we all are elders, regardless of whether how old we are right now, we're going to talk more about that too. And the work that we need to do to be those elders for the generations to come. So this morning we're going to live out that work that I just talked about a little bit. I make a promise that you are going to walk away feeling like the world is a little bit better off than when you arrived this morning, which is no small task because the world is a dumpster fire, but one, but one I delightfully accept. And I hope that you will as well. Look at that. All right. Okay. Oh, look at me. Okay. In keeping with the alchemical theme, our personal stories, our personal lore, if you will, are curative elixirs for ourselves and others that offer us deeper personal understanding, as well as ancestral healing of our lineage, backward and forward. That is some powerful medicine, y'all. 
when we truly know ourselves through our stories, our personal, our ancestral, our societal stories, and when we see our stories woven through others' personal and collective stories, we begin a transformation into the elders, the wisdom bearers that our vastly changing society needs and deserves. This is the foundation of my personal work as well as my professional explorations. And today we're gonna chat about an experiment with how we can adapt personal lore into our daily creative process, into our mental health practices, and into how we support one another in relationship in micro and macrocosmic ways. But first, I'm gonna define a couple of terms that will ground us for where we are headed this morning. Are y'all good with that? I'm trying to see here. You know what, I'm gonna take these off. They're driving me insane. All right, here we go. According to Auntie herself as Ursula K. Le Guin, are y'all familiar with Ursula K. Le Guin? If you are not, go and read all of her books. My favorite is this one. Y'all, I carry books as my friends around with me and I have a bunch of them up here. So after it's over, you can come up and take pictures. I'm also gonna have pictures up here as well. But Ursula K. Le Guin, she is a, 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 revel, a revelation and an elder. She is a beautiful elder. So according to her, she called the Oxford English Dictionary a wise old aunt. And I love that. So I call her Auntie Oxford. And I recently heard that somebody calls Google uncle. So Uncle Google and Auntie Oxford, y'all take that away with you and have fun. Okay. In her brilliant book of essays, Words are my matter, and y'all go get that book immediately. So that's what she calls it. Annie Oxford, the formal definition of folklore, our wonderful Creative Mornings theme this month, is one, the traditional belief, you can read it up here. Um, I don't have to read it out to you. And customs and stories of a community passed through the generations by word of mouth. And two, a body of popular myth and beliefs relating to a particular place, activity, or group of people. I can't talk about folklore without spotlighting my favorite element of lore, which is myth. Myth is defined by Auntie Oxford as a traditional story, especially one concerning the early history of a people or explaining some natural or social phenomenon and typically involving supernatural beings or events. We are all supernatural beings. So whenever you hear any kind of story about a God or anything, y'all, that's just human beings because we're equally so. Regardless of what your belief is, there's something else going on than just body suits, right? So, okay, so just be aware that when we talk about that myth, that's us, like we are, we are the myth and we can make our own myths, okay. And then two, oh, the, an example of that is ancient Celtic myths. And I feel like, where am I, where am I? British and Irish ancestry at, that's right. Um, and a widely held but false belief or idea. I call bullshit all that, but I'm not gonna get, it. that's a whole other story. They're not, they're not necessarily false beliefs. There's some that are, but then there's a lot that are just real. Because I am a citizen mythologist, a writer, a storyteller, a creative, and a bit of a mystic. Oh, who are we kidding? I call myself a belligerent revolutionary oracle. Doña Sonia, because I've got the gray and now that glasses. Um, the mystical belligerent revolutionary oracle. Um, that's what they're going to eulogize me on my, at my death. Like that's the name they're going to. Um, but because I am that, I'm not going to be belligerent today. So don't worry. That's on Facebook. Just, you know, that's fine. Um, but today I'm going to, as that guide, as that mystical, revolutionary, belligerent oracle, I'm going to take y'all through the veil today. Are you ready? Okay. Into the imaginal realm where we will play with mythic imagination and maybe discover our own divine stories. Ready or not, you are coming on this mystical, magical, mythical, imaginal journey with me. Look at my face here. Look at it. Don't you want to go where I am here? I wasn't even doing drugs. I was just in the baths and in 
tor in um, British Virgin Islands at Virgin Gorda, looking up in through this stone structure into the sky. I mean, you'll go there too if, at the world when the world opens up and they actually want you. I don't think British Virgin Islands want anybody there, but when they do, when they start wanting y'all to come back, go. Um, this this is the epitome of the liminal, but we're gonna we're gonna get into it a little bit. I mean, this is a magical place too. We can we can bring it. We can bring the liminal to us. All right. Next up, tell you about my favorite person. Um, as defined by Dr. Sharon Blackie, a highly acclaimed author, psychologist, and mythologist, and personal teacher of mine, mythic imagination is the practice of being open to and actively contemplating the images which arise unbidden in our dreams, in stories, poems, and art. It's about exploring the symbolic languages of the imagination, the archetypal languages, for example, of the tarot and astrology. Above all, it's about counting the anima mundi of ancient tradition, the world soul, which we all are threaded into of which each individual soul is a part. This practice of integrating mythic imagination through the sharing of our stories and being in relationship with another story is what we are experimenting with today. This is an alchemical process that bridges us together in the ways humans have been connecting to one another since we evolved into Homo sapiens, since ancient times and probably before we evolved into Homo sapiens, because I feel like we were doing it. That's how our brains made neural pathways scientifically to get us to be the Homo sapiens that we are today. All right, let's talk about the curative elixir. Okay, I had so much fun making this. Okay, um, it's that curative elixir that I spoke about before, and we need a few ingredients, okay? to create the medicine that will bridge us together. These ingredients are necessary for ourselves and for others. We must give equal doses of ourselves and others in each of our elixir concoctions. That is the key here, okay? That is the secret ingredient, is the dosage. Take note of this recipe as you will be using it in community in just a few moments. All right. Imagine you have a vial or a goblet or a mug or a glass of some sort, or I mean, if you want to go out, which just like a cauldron, that's fine, um, that you will be pouring your ingredients into. So I want you to like, like, if you need to mime this, like, don't be afraid, mime it, like be like, All right, we're going to pour in these ingredients. Okay. Whatever brings you delight, I want you to picture that in your mind's eye. All right. The first ingredient of our concoction we need is curiosity about ourselves and about others. As creatives, I feel certain that this is something we can easily access, right? Definitely curiosity about others. But I also want you to focus on being curious about yourself too. Like PhD curious. Like, do you have a PhD in yourself? Have you ever thought to get a PhD in yourself? Or do you feel important enough to get a PhD in yourself? Like that, that, we want to di dive in deep like that. You are a whole story. Every tiny thing about you is a story. And you will be foraging and discovering that today. Next ingredient is non-judgment. Y'all, I know. Deep breath, deep breath, non-judgment. <laughs> it's so fucking hard. I'm sorry, am I allowed to curse? Okay, you may be judging me right now for even saying this, like in telling you to pour non-judgment into this concoction, like scowling at me in your soul. I understand, I get it. This one is hard and could take a lifetime to manifest a consistent daily practice that would allow a dose to even be added to the elixir. Like, I get it. Think of all the things you want to judge right now. Think of like, it's hard. And like to, to not judge that, but also accountability. I'm not saying bypass anything, like hold accountable, but also 
try not to judge it. And that balance is really, really hard. And it requires practice every single day. And then you have to take lots of naps. So seriously, like give yourself grace and compassion. All right. But it's that it is a practice. And if we commit to practice daily, non-judgment can be the single, listen to me, this is a truth. It can be the single most liberating experience of your life. And it can offer so much space for creativity to flow in. I want you to be ready to get vulnerable in a minute and try this non-judgment in this alchemical recipe. Remember, we are trying not to judge others and not to judge ourselves. Like really first, try not to judge yourself because only in doing that does it open up the space to not judge others. But like our whole society is based on judging ourselves and then judging others. So it's intense and it's so worth the practice. All right. Last, most difficult to find, but most important ingredient is a foundation of unconditional love for ourselves and for others. Take a breath. I know, I know. Why do we have to talk about love? I'm asking that myself too, because I, it's just so much easier not to deal with it. I came here for folklore. Like I came here to like learn about like maybe Zeus and like a, a lightning bolt. No, poor bless Zeus's heart. He had some love work that he needed to do <laughs> on himself and like his whole family and all of like all the poor Greeks who had to like deal with his mess. Okay. Um, hear me out. Unconditional love of ourselves first spills over and is the essence of all creative expression. It's the core of it, y'all. And I know y'all know that. I know y'all know that when you are deep in whatever creative practice you have, when you are dropping into unconditional love of yourself, of whatever the medium, it, it, like magic happens, right? There's like a channeling that happens. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Um, it's the core. And when you are deep in the rapture of your most aligned creative self, it's an outpouring of love. All right, now. And so this is elemental in bridging our stories together and healing one another and the world we live in through honoring our own and one another's personal lore through the alchemy of equal parts Curiosity, non judgment, and unconditional love of ourselves and others. This is no small task I am proposing for us to practice this morning. I know some of y'all only had like one cup of coffee. I'm pretty sorry, but it is easier to do this one on one in small groups of like minded people. But as is the micro, so is the macro. If we can do it here, among friends or fellow creative spirits, we can level up in ways that will ripple out and change the face of the earth. We need the face of the earth changed, y'all. And this is a beautiful and simple practice we can implement in our lives to do it. Leaning into mythic imagination through our personal lore our personal ancestral and societal stories is the healing work of our lifetime. It requires intuition to know deeply one another's truths. This practice has been serving me well, nourishing my mental health, which is precarious on a, on a good day. Um, uh -huh. um, and deepening the process that which creates spaces, look, see, I got funny and then I lost my place, which creates space for a deepening creative process that is a cycle, a revolution. That's why my business is Revolutions Imaginarium. A cycle I want to perpetuate and share with others, which means y'all, we are gonna practice it together today. All right, so you've got your ingredients and you've poured it in to your glass. So here's, oh wait, Here's how, okay, here, here's how. All right, first I will tell a personal lore, a story that is just my own, 
before you listen to that story, I want you all to drink the elixir we just made. Okay. Of curiosity, of non-judgment, of unconditional love for ourselves and others equal parts. Remember we poured it all in. All right. So I want you to raise your imaginary glass, your imaginal glass. Mine is this Blackberry Cosmo concoction. They used to make it J. Alexander's in the early 2000s with a tiny piece of dry ice at the bottom with the blackberries. They don't make it anymore. It's only alive in the liminal realm we are about to enter as we toast and consume this medicinal deliciousness. Cheers, salud, ching ching. All right, take a deep, uh. All right, y'all know how it feels when you have tequila? Okay, that's it. That warmth, you feel it? Okay, and then, ooh, and it's gonna go down. It's gonna go down into all of your parts. And then, you know where you feel it in your toes? You know that kind of that kind of night out? That's what this elixir is. But y'all, it's all natural and filled with love. I mean, not that liquor isn't, but, okay. All right, here we go. Um, the warmth and comfort that this elixir is providing, the liminal space where stories flow from one of us to the next, the stories, the concoctions, the love, it's bubbling up and ready to overflow. I feel like we're at Charlie and Chocolate Factory, you know, in that thing when they went up into the, and they were like drinking the bubbles and they were like burping. Like, that's it. Like, that's the energy. Okay. This is where dreams come to play, y'all. And these are where your stories are going to come from. All right. What is going to happen now is I want you to listen to my personal lore through the lens of mythic imagination in your own personal life, being open to and actively contemplating, I'm, I'm telling you mythic imagination again, the images, archetypes, language, which arise unbidden in your dreams, stories, poems, and art through your own connection to the anima mundi or the world soul which is going to trigger a story of your own that depending on how you process creatively may offer you insights and expansion into your own artistic medium once you leave here. So take note of the synchronicities as they come to you. After I finish my story, Christy is gonna break us up into small groups. And on the Zoom, y'all will have time to be in community together and volunteer to share stories because I don't know how many people are on the Zoom. Um, and one of you will tell a short anecdotal story about yourself. And I feel like y'all, we've already started it today. That comes up while listening to my short story through that mythical imaginal lens of curiosity. And it happened here because it started off like just a tradition. And then y'all all thought of things, right? And then you were like, oh, but all of you are gonna get a chance to do it. Okay. But I want you to listen through that mythical, imaginal lens of curiosity, non-judgment and unconditional love. And then the next person will tell a story based off of either mine or the first story told in the small group and onward until everyone in the group who would like to share, I'm not gonna twist anybody's arm here. Um, a personal lore has had a chance to do so. Oh, I'm hot as hell. Okay. <laughs> See how important it is to drink that elixir? See, I drank that elixir and now I'm like at the club. Okay. <laughs> Curiosity, non judgment, and unconditional love creates a space for community care, which bridges us together through our personal lore. Here's my story to get us started. All right. I'm not gonna read, I'm just gonna tell you all the story. Okay, it's really quick. I was born June 2nd, 1977. I'm a sixth generation Nashvilleian. I grew up in the neighborhood near Cheekwood. It's now called the Highlands of Belmead. It has a whole bunch of big houses they built on it. My house was tiny and just regular, like people. It was regular people house, not whoever lives in Belmead now. Okay, um, so that, that if you've ever been to Cheekwood, that kind of magical forest feel, if you've ever been to Percy Warner Park, that was like my backyard because it was all part of the same forest. And every year, just before my birthday, the lightning bugs would come out. And I was confident, I mean, you couldn't tell me different, that they were my birthday gift. I, I knew it, like they arrived just in time as we began the preparation for celebrating my birthday. And I was like, there my gift, my gift is here. My gift has arrived to light up the night on my birthday. 
and everybody went along with it. Like my family, everybody, lightning bugs, lightning bugs. So then I had a daughter, my first daughter, she was born in 2011 on May 15th. And I would tell her this story when she was real little. I was like, do you see the lightning bugs? They're starting to arrive at me. So my birthday's coming up. And she said, but my birthday just happened. And you always said that we celebrate a birthday for a month. I was like, I know, extended dance mix birthday. Woo, woo. And she was like, okay, well, the, the, the lightning bugs are ours. We kind of like, she didn't say we bookend, but she was like, my birthday happens. Then the lightning bugs come. And then your birthday happens. They're our lightning bugs. And I was like, they are. And I'm telling you, my daughter who was born on St. Patty's Day, she looks for them. Tommy, my husband right here, everybody looks for the lightning bugs, the first lightning bugs. And it's a big deal. And then we learned about the lightning bugs and we want to go to the Smoky Mountains and see them. They are like an archetype for like the summer, for us, for our birth. It's so much fun and delightful. That's my story, y'all. The end. So Christy's going to break y'all up. Zoom people, y'all go amongst yourselves. We're going to take a few minutes, break up and, and tell some very quick anecdotal stories. All right. All right. All right. Are we good? Okay. Y'all, thank y'all for doing this and for connecting. I am. Um, when when the pandemic began and uh i mean i i went to a few of the i went to creative mornings live and it was amazing and beautiful but when it went down when everything went down and they had this that first two years ago in march um and the community that came in around that and how we would do the breakout session i just oh so i'm so thankful to see it live. Like I knew it existed in that, that magic online when we weren't burned out on zoom. And so I thank those of you on zoom for, um, even in burnout of 2022 being there and connecting. And it was just beautiful to just stand back because I was hot as hell. And I had to like fan myself and watch y'all connecting community. So thank you for that. Um, so while I have you immersed in the magic of personal connection through our stories, I would like to share a bit about myself, a bio, if you will. Most of my programs and connectives um, offerings like today's program, all draw on story as a medicinal for soul sovereignty, because I believe everyone born prior to 2010, which is all of us, I think, I don't see any children in here, um, are members of what I call the bridge generations, who will hold space for and support our living and future descendants at, an, at the end of an era we neither ushered forth nor will be able to rectify in our lifetimes. To do that important, like humanity sustaining work, we have to practice healing ourselves on the micro through creative modalities that balance the body, mind, and soul, which will root our embodied selves, that bodysuit, you know, that I talked about, into the earth so we may rise up into our divinity, which then ripples out into the macro, mirroring the healing of our society and our ancestral lineage, seven generations forward and backward. Y'all did that today. Didn't it, wasn't it fun too? Okay, so it's not like I get that we need actionable steps to change the world and make it better. And we do need to do that, like do that. But also remember that in just doing what we did today, that also does that healing work. And in what we each do as creatives and how we tap into that creativity, that is doing the healing work that will sustain us so that we can be the elders, that the children that are coming onto the earth now, who are going to be alive to have to figure it out, they're going to need us to be their elders. And we have to do this work now, no matter how old we are, to find that balance and to bring in that joy and that community connection and care 
so that we can sustain them so we can sustain ourselves and so we can continue to perpetuate that vibe and that energy all the way out into the future seven generations out right so it's revolutionary work y'all so i've committed myself to it personally and professionally i write i create workshops like this i read tarot in a real soul-centered, non-predictive kind of way. So if you ever want to have your tarot read or have me come to a party and do tarot, I have a tarot book coming out in 2023 that's super fun that I will let everybody know and it's available. And I also analyze and work with people on their human design. So I'm not going to get into that. That's a whole other thing. But if you know about human design, come and hang out with me and let's talk. Come to my website. So my website is complicated. It's revolutions.me. I don't have it up here. I have my link tree up here, which is just Sonia Fernandez LeBlanc because it has everything. It has my website. It has my Instagram and Facebook and how to connect with me in all the realms. It has my Patreon, which I'm going to tell you all about in a second. So that is revolutions is my personal archetype. Okay. Um, it's threaded through my life from early in childhood as an ice skater, practicing perfect, the perfect spin, right? Which you gotta root in and rise up, ooh, and bring in, oh my God, wheel of fortune energy all over that. Um, and to leaving my profession as an educator because of my deep dismay with the education systems in our nation, to my work to revolutionize lifelong learning for all ages, including those who are classified as school age, to my personal healing journey after a pretty awful mental break a decade ago that revolves around modalities. So the way I'm healing myself is around these modalities, such as energy work and story making through tarot, human design, and reclamation of spirit from systems of indoctrination. There are so many systems of indoctrination, y'all. Okay, my personal mantra through the revolutions of life is root down rise up to the revolutions, all definitions apply. All the definitions of revolution apply here. And Christy made the most wonderful stickers, read down, rise up. And I believe lithographics is that they printed them. And so please grab yourself some and, and honor that. Cause we all like, that is a mantra for all of us. It's mine, but I, we all can root down and rise up. All right. So above all of these things that I'm telling you, I am a community connector and I want my favorite communities to know about each other, especially since they all offer elements and energies we tap into today. Oh, wait, oh, there we go, there we go. Um, these are the communities that feed my own mythic imagination and that might offer sustenance you didn't even know you needed. And some of y'all may already know about them. The first one is Rockvale Writers Colony. It's just south of Franklin in College Grove, Tennessee. Poet and triathlete Sandy Coomer has created, oh, it's so magical, a beautiful and sacred place offering writing residencies and the most incredible, intimate, yet expansive writing retreats. Um, she has an enchanted, she's on 70 acres of property there and she has this enchanted forest that she's built all these beautiful paths and trails through. Y'all, it just draws you into nature's liminality. I sometimes co-facilitate retreats with her and I spend time in residency every year writing. I highly recommend checking it out if you don't already know about it. And it is for the Zoom, but for y'all, it's just rockvalewriterscolony.org. All right, Art and Soul Nashville. And I've got some more Art and Soul people here. It's an art studio dedicated to supporting individual creativity, personal growth and artistic development, fostering a safe, stimulating and rich environment for beginning and experienced artists to connect with their capacity to create, explore and discover the beauty and power of personal expression. I got this from their website, so it sounds really fancy, but it's not my words. Okay, to that end, mediums and practices that address the whole person meditation, sound, breath, movement, music, writing, painting, drawing, and other visual arts 
are offered through classes, workshops, and individual sessions. Membership in their co-op is also available for those like me, because I'm a member, who desire the ongoing connection and depth of an established supportive community. They've been around for 35 years, y'all. They're not going anywhere. If you are looking for a studio where playful, authentic, and meaningful artistic exploration can happen, you have found it at Art and Soul. I am on the membership committee. If you want to chat about how much I love the studio, I also have some postcards with the art and all kinds of good stuff. We can chat after this is over. It is, I love this place. It is a physical representation of the imaginal realm, this is my words, that offers an opportunity to connect to your deepest creative soul right here in Nashville. It's over off Trousdale. Okay. Um, and 35 years old, it's not going anywhere. Go at least take a class and check it out. It is the, like you walk in, it's the liminal. Like you literally are like going through a portal when you walk into their studio. Okay. At a women's circle in 2017, created by Creative Mornings veteran speaker, Karen Renee Robb, who is here in the audience, I met a woman named Kira Marnett, who found, and y'all, this, this women's circle that we went to, yeah, it, the women that I connected with there, y'all go do circles, go, go be in circles. Men, y'all go in circles too. Look, for, I have a book for y'all called Iron John. It's about mythology and men's movement and like taking care of yourselves. Men need to be in circle too. Okay. Um, we, the women that I connected with through that have like been transformative in my life. And Kira Marnett founded the New Earth Media, which publishes a, a publication that's new. It just started last summer called the New Earth Almanac. It's a daily devotional for the evolutionary soul, a monthly magazine published in Nashville, written by visionaries, mystics, intuitives, artists, and healers from all over the globe giving voice to and supporting the collective co-creating, building the world we wish to live in. I am a contributing writer, as are some friends I see here today. Um, personal lore that connects us is a common theme, as are fascinating and brilliant reflections on folklore. You want to go and find this article by this guy named Jeff Basiglio about how Santa stems from the Amanita muscari mushrooms in old Nordic shamans would take the mushrooms that look like Santa Claus and trip. And then that, that folklore and mythology is why we got the big Santa Claus guy. Now it is fascinating. It's so good. Um, and then I have an article, which is very connected to what we're talking about here about listening to your lineage to create spiritual practices and rituals that support ancestral healing and are not appropriative. It's really important if you're in the spiritual realm to not be appropriative. Um, so much magic in this publication. So last but not least, books, y'all. Okay, I lead, wait, that's podcast. Where are the books? Okay, I lead a Patreon group that's $5 a month and we, it's called Root to Rise Contemplative Community. And it is a book study group where I curate a list of secular books that we read in community as sacred texts. Um, it's one of the most transformational communities I have ever been a part of. I know I started it, but like, I'm not the reason why it's transformational. The people that come and are reading these books and then are having these conversations every month. And then we have a weekly sacred text study of reading Sweetgrass that we've been doing for a year. We've been reading Spring Sweetgrass like it's a Bible. It's so good. Like using like Lectio Divina and like floor, like the, like the monastic stuff. It's so much fun. If you think that's fun, you will like it. If you are like that person's crazy, then it's okay. Just take a picture of the books because they're really good. Um, but you're most welcome to join us. But if you don't feel called, here's a screen grab. Um, of the books we read last year. So this list over here are the books we read last year. The one on top of Women Rose Rooted by Sharon Blackie is so good. She's like my favorite. I love her. Um, but then all of, all of them are so good. Writing Sweetgrass, we're, we're doing, we're always going back to it. Um, the other books are ones we're reading this year. We're at the parable of the sower right now. Um, and then the rest are coming. And then 
The Power of Myth by Joseph Campbell and um, anything by Maria Gambutis. She's an archeo mythologist who um, basically knew that pre-Indo-European Europe was a goddess culture and she spoke it and then she was blackballed in her academic community until in 2017, the DNA results backed it up, right? Okay, so she's great. And then Joseph Campbell, he's kind of problematic about women, but his, his, he's still great. He's a must read if you are doing mythology. I have a whole bunch, all of these books up here if you wanna like feel them like I do, like I'm a little mini bookstore. Um, and then finally podcasts. These are my favorite story-based myth, myth, fun, informative interview, all, I mean, they're just so good. Like any of these you begin and you're gonna, you're just, the liminal is gonna come through to you. And then I think that's it y'all. Thank you so much for letting me be my full mythological and storytelling mystical self today. Happy birthday, creative mornings. Thank you, thank you. Y'all get these stickers, they're so good.